Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to make some altered playing cards. Yeah, pretty easy, these pretty simple. And yeah, I'll just crack on and show you how I make them. Right, I'm using jumbo playing cards. Uh, I just find it a bit easier, you can get more. Right? They're a little bit more versatile. They measure just over three and a quarter inches by just over four and three quarters. In centimetres, that is eight and a quarter by 12 and, yeah, a quarter. <laughs> yeah. So, let's crack on. These were from Amazon. They cost me £2.49. They're not too shiny, which I like. And, yeah, the box did turn up looking like it had been stamped on and somebody had spilled the coffee on it. I don't know why, but inside... The cards were pristine, so I weren't moaning for £2.49. Right, let me crack on and show you how I do them. Right, first thing you're going to need to do with one of these cards is give it what we call a key. Or just rough up the surface, yeah? Now, there's two ways you can do that. One, you can do it with a piece of sandpaper. Here's one I did earlier. Went a bit mad with that. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to show you this one. Just rub it on the surface. You'll feel it's rough. Yeah. It's not really something I can show on camera. You can perhaps see it's not as shiny as a new card. Yeah, but these cards, to be honest, don't have too much shine anyway. So, hey-ho. But the way I prefer to do it now is with some clear gesso. There's no dust, so if anyone else got, if you've got asthma or anything, you don't want to be messing with dusty things, especially not when your voice is already going. So let's grab that one. We'll grab three of hearts. First step, I just put some of this clear gesso on. Mine's Liquitex. Use any brand you want. This just happened to be one I bought for no reason other than it was one I could get quickest off Amazon when I wanted it. Last time I wanted to use clear gesso. It's like my cards. I knew I got some uh, jumbo playing cards, but I couldn't find them, so I ordered some more from Amazon. I thought two forty nine. I'll give them a whirl. Right. I'm using a soft brush to put it on. Put it on with. This happens to be a Perfect Pearls brush. So if anyone remembers Perfect Pearls and you've got any hanging about, every time you bought a set of it three or four, they gave you another brush. So I ended up with quite a few of them brushes. And they're really good for this. Right, then you're going to need to let that dry. Yeah? Once it's dried, you can paint on it, ink it, do whatever you want with it. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Because I'm doing this a bit Blue Peter style today. If you have, if you know Blue Peter in the UK. There we go. We've now got three of clubs, pre-gessoed. Can you feel? Ungessoed. Gessoed, love it. Now, let's get some ink on. I'm using my walnut stain uh, distress oxide. Yeah, gesso does take the ink really well. You might think I'm inking this up far too much, but I'm going to be putting the collage paper over it. So that will dull the ink down a bit. Can you see just an edge there where I've not quite got gesso? Don't bother me. I'm going to make much more mess on edge than that. So, we've got quite a bit of ink on there. You can go into it as far as you want, but in a minute, you're going to see what happens to all that ink when I start putting my glue on. Right, I'm now going to use this gel mat medium to stick my collage paper onto my card. You can use Mod Podge, you can use watered down PVA, whatever you prefer. You could perhaps could even use a glue stick, yeah? This is just how I prefer to do it. I'm gonna grab one of my label backing sheets, pop it underneath, yeah? And <clears throat> decide which, I think, shall I use the rose paper for this one? Yeah, we could do one with some roses there and there. Then we'll perhaps see that there or do that bit. I don't know. Let's decide that when we've put glue on. <laughs> we've got the paper out ready. Have your paper out ready before you put your matte medium on or whatever you're using. Right. Um, I love my matte medium coming in a tube like this. 
and you can obviously see why. Oh, look, I've got the, do you know the old bit? You know, it's like skin on a rice pudding there, isn't it? Yeah, ugh, we don't want that, do we? We don't want that, do we, Deirdre? Right, so, you'll now see because this ink I've put on is water soluble. Can you see it's running? But I like that. I quite like it. I've got a new foam here, so I'm going to have to put a bit more just, uh, matte medium on. I did some of these earlier today and then I left my foam to dry while I got my Asda shopping. And when I came back, it were, it were like concrete. So I just threw it away and got another one. It wouldn't, it was just not gonna, you can't get wash matte medium off this foam. All right, so can you see what's happened? All my colours run. But like I said, I quite like that. I'm also not too bothered if I get this completely even or not. And you'll see why when we get to the next bit. Right, that's okay. Now I'm going to grab my collage paper. And I like to put my collage paper down like this. Yeah, front side down. And then I'm going to put my card to my paper. Right, because they're playing cards, it doesn't matter if you get this right way up or not. You can decide which way up you want it after. And you see how that's like curled because I've put the matte medium on. That just makes it so easy, in my opinion, <laughs> to get this on nice and smooth. <laughs> just get any off I've got on my fingers. I'm going to grab my big chompy scissors. And I'm just going to cut. I'm not cutting right up to edge. I want a little bit to grab onto. Right. Look, I just think that's brilliant. Yeah, there's no messing about trying to smooth out wrinkles. It's just on. There we go. Now, I'm going to go back to one I prepared earlier now. So the next stage of it is I want... Can you see this one? I've not got the collage paper all the way up to the edges. Yeah, I've just ripped, ripped it off. And left a raggedy edge and then done a bit more inking, which I like. Right, so I've also earlier prepared one. I've let this dry for a couple of hours. Can you see how the matte medium, you never get it up to edges. It just doesn't happen when you're putting it on with a brush. You always get them bits on edges where it's not covered. Yeah, oh, that is one I did without inking first. Can you see how clean and white that is? Yeah. Whereas the one that I ink round the edges, I've got the streaks of ink and it just makes it look a little bit more vintage. That one I forgot to ink the edges, so I'll use that for another project. Right, I hope you're still with me. That's the one I've just done. I need to put that somewhere to dry for a couple of hours. Oh, an hour should do. It also will flatten itself out as it dries. Yes, don't worry about that. Put you over there out it way so we've now swapped to this one and we're back on birds aren't we so it didn't matter what i picked for the last one thank you thump now i'm gonna do this can you see i'm ripping from the edges in and it's just leaving with that lovely rough edge and if there's any bits anywhere where i've missed the glue it'll just you'll see a bubble and then you can just pull it off like did i do that here quite a bit we're missing there if you look at my original one yeah there's a big piece missing there where that bird is but i like that it makes it look like you spent ages making that edge all grungy and rough looking and it were really this easy i mean if you wanted to just put glue in certain places you could that bit didn't want to come off, so I'm just going to grab, I've got a nail file here. Then that'll come off, yeah. If you've got any rough bits that don't want to come off, get your sandpaper back out. Or, like I said, I like to use a nail file. Now that is ready for inking. So I'll get rid of them bits. Get my walnut stain distress oxide back out. 
and I'm just going to ink. Now you'll find the gessoed bits, the bits where there's bits of paper left. They'll all take the ink slightly differently. And I just think it makes a lovely edge. It's starting to look a little bit more like that one now, isn't it? Right. That's that. While I'm at it, I will... Did I... Oh, I've already done that one. I'll put a bit more on. I like it. So, those two are now ready to put our backing on. They're very, can you say, they're quite flexible, these cards, because they're thin, you know. They seem more bendy once you've put your collage paper on. So just get one of them. That'll flatten, out, flatten them out nicely. Right, I'm going to grab this again. Now, I'm going to put this on the back. This is, I do have this on my Amazon storefront. It's self-adhesive brown paper. Yeah. Not to turn it over so what i'm gonna i'll do these one at a time will that fit there yes i, I seem to think i measured it so it would yeah with well, these jumbo cards you'll get three along there and then you can get two there so you can get five cards that one sheet of paper that's pretty good so i'm gonna peel my backing back and then i'm gonna put my card on here i'm gonna try to line the edges up i'm not always successful but you can always trim it off but here i want to be good because it's not very wide is it oh my voice nearly went then i've managed to get that edge lined up and my top edge ish there we go so that's one stuck on and i think i'll stick one on here i mean if you've got five prepared you could do all five at once couldn't you you could I'm going to line that one up. Yeah, it's not quite lined up. <clears throat> I love this for backing. I mean, if you don't have this, you can put anything on. Tea dyed paper. Anything. You could even just gesso the back with some white gesso. So that it could be written on. Might look quite nice, that. It's a white gesso and some ink. You go to town. This is, this, these are my easy ones. When I've not crafted for a while, I get the urge to do something easy that I can get finished in an hour or so. Right, I'm just going to get my bone folder on them. And I'm going to trim right edges with my big chompy scissors. And basically, we're just about done. What I like about these, it looks like you've done an awful lot more work on that playing card than what we did, doesn't it? And like I said, because these cards aren't too thick, they're cheap. They're cheap and nasty. <laughs> well, they're not nasty, they're just cheap. If I'd have gone for expensive ones, they would have probably been really thick. Probably not what I would have wanted to use in my journals for journal cards and tags. I mean, you can even make pockets out of these. Do what you want with them. I'm just going to grab my corner rounder. My little one happened to be just the right size for rounding my paper to the same size as my cards. But even if it's not, it will just round the card as well. If you want more rounded corners on, do it. I just missed a bit there. Myself. Right, my next step where I'll move that. I didn't need to do any more gluing. I don't know why I got that back out. Probably because, yeah, probably because I don't know why. Right, I'm going to grab my little Tim Holtz snippets. What are they actually called, these? Small talk, yeah. <clears throat> 
So, oh, today is full of possibilities. What did I put on other one? You are capable of more than you realise. Hmm. That actually said you are capable of becoming more than you realise. But I just, I liked you are capable of more than you realise better. So I just snipped the becoming out of the middle. Right. What did I say? What did I say we wanted? Life was meant for a great adventure. Throw kindness around like confetti. I like that. Hmm. Hmm. Well, nothing is sure. No beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. I can't remember which one I wanted, so but they're all as good as each other. Keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable. I think we might have that one. Right, this one, because we've got lots of room here, I'm going to put it here. We'll still see those roses. That one might get covered with words. I'm going to snip it there. It keeps some room. I'll snip that there in your heart for the unimaginable. Yeah. I'm just going to ink round those, glue them and stick them on. Come here, glue. I'm going to use my art glitter for these. Oop. <laughs> what did I say? I'm using jumbo playing cards so I don't have to mess about with tiny little things. Then I pick the tiniest little words to stick on. I'm just wondering if I do want to cover that rose. Yeah, I do. There's nothing... There's no other more suitable place to put it. As long as I can see those three, I'm a happy bunny. So ink those up. Now because I've moulded these with my fingers, getting the ink on, that's why I always put a little bit of art glitter glue on. There we go. Wee. We got a wee. There we go. I'm not really bothered if they're 100% straight. I don't think they are, but I don't think the uh, wordage police are going to be out for me, are they? I think that was straight before I wobbled it. Let's get rid of any extra glue. Yeah, that'll do me. I'm quite happy with that. All right, what we're going to stick on this one? I don't want. I don't think I want anything quite so big on this one because I love that whole picture. Live, create, tell the story. That's what we'll have. I'm going to ink the edges before I cut it this time. Then I've only got the little bit where I cut it to ink. There we go. And you don't have to sew around these. It's not essential. Where do we want this? No, I don't want it up there. But I think I might want it here rather than right at the bottom. Yeah. Live, create. And then tell the story underneath. Then I'm not covering up too much of that lovely foliage. Did I ink that edge? Did I ink? So that's straight enough. It's about as straight as a donkey's back leg, but it's fine. Right. Next thing I did, just to give it a bit of interest, pop. A little eyelet in. I'm just going to pop off camera and sew these. Well, what did this silly woman do? She paused the camera to sew and then I came back. Instead of unpausing it, I pressed stop. I pressed stop and I didn't film putting my charms and my eyelets in. Right, we all know you know how to punch an eyelet, yeah? And... 
these charms, the reason I was saying these were going to be easy is, what I've used is that two millimetre ball chain that I've got loads of. Because these are charms that you can make without any tools whatsoever, which is always a bonus, isn't it? I've got my two millimetre ball chain connector. So that's one end on. And then I've used these eight millimetre jump rings. And the reason I like these is, look, they're big enough and they are quite strong, these. They're big enough for you to open them with your fingers. If you can find to join that is. Ta da! Then grab a charm. What shall we have? We'll have a different bird. Yes, yeah, so that's all you've missed me do, really. Is pop those holes in and pop a charm on. I can't, I can't actually believe I did that with my camera. That's because I'm rusty. You know, I've only made a couple of videos a week over Christmas. I am very rusty. Let's put this hummingbird on. So then you can close that back up. So if you want to have a go at making charms and you don't want to mess about using tools, I would suggest the 8mm jump rings are fabulous. And these ball chains, because you just cut these with an old pair of scissors. And put your connectors on. And there you have it. A presto, a charm. There we go. So, yeah, there we have my three little altar playing cards. I hope you enjoyed that. And, yeah, give them a go. I'd love to see them if you do give them a go. You can always tag me on Instagram, email me, message me. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye.